Hey everyone, Tactics here, back with more War Within Season 1 Dungeon Guides, where this time we're going to go through the heavily revamped Cataclysm Dungeon, Grim Batol. This dungeon has received quite the face of, so I'll be discussing all the changes you need to know about, as well as important trash and boss abilities, as well as how I recommend you deal with them. For a full list of abilities in the dungeon, check out my updated Mythic Plus spreadsheet or my written guides on the Method website linked in the description below. Otherwise, let's talk about the trash you're going to be facing on your way to the first boss. The main caster in this area are the Twilight Earthcallers, and their important kick is Mass Tremor. There's a big AoE hit and slow on your entire party, so make sure you interrupt every single one of those, and then use your spare kicks on their random target vault ability. The big dragons in this area are the Twilight Destroyers. They have an important AoE hit in Umbral Wind. There's also has a massive knockback attached to it. However, you can use the little walls and outcroppings here to actually LOS this hit and avoid the damage and the knockback. So I recommend doing that if you're able to. To make this a bit more difficult, they will occasionally debuff players with Twilight Flame, which is a dot on them that also leaves a puddle on the ground with each tick. This player will not only need some extra healing, but they'll need to be careful not to drop these puddles in your safe LOS spots. The other lieutenant mob in this area are the Twilight Overseers. They will occasionally enrage all nearby mobs with reckless tactics, so tanks be very, very careful when this happens. Use Sues on priority targets, and tanks also be aware of the Rive hit, as this is a buster on you that also increases your physical damage taken for 12 seconds, so in combination, these can be quite scary now about halfway to the first boss you'll find several trapped red dragons which you can free and mount to do a bombing run on the remaining trash between you and general umbris this is a bit different from the original run as it's only half the distance and your dragon actually has two abilities here engulfing flames is your big hit which has five uses which you want to make sure you make them count and then searing ember is your smaller hit that you can spam for aiming, the most important pack to shoot and kill is the one directly in front of General Umbris. Otherwise, you just want to try and hit maybe the patrol when it's next to one of the stationary packs so you can get double value, or just the five pack that is near the boss. Speaking of the boss, let's move over to him now, which is almost entirely new. Commanding Roar is the big AoE hit of the fight, which causes Drakes to strafe across three quarters of the platform shortly after each cast, so you need to be ready to move to the safe area using any move speed bonuses as necessary. After the breaths have disappeared, I recommend just centering yourself back towards the middle of the platform just to make dodging the next set of breaths easier. From there, the boss will alternate what abilities he casts. He will debuff three players with Rock Spike. This deals damage, this knocks them forward a little bit, and it spawns a puddle underneath them for two minutes. I recommend dropping these puddles starting on the western side of the boss arena where you come in at, and then you just move east across the platform as you fill up that space. This guarantees you always have some room to actually avoid those dragon breaths we talked about. For tanks, he will channel Skull Splitter into you, dealing heavy damage and applying a stacking bleed. So make sure you always have a defensive ability running for this and use a bleed cleanse as needed. From there, we move towards Forge Master Throngus's trash, but be aware of the boss in this area as he does patrol throughout this entire room. Plus, occasionally he'll stop and start disturbing the nearby lava, which just creates swirlies that your group needs to avoid. In terms of the trash in this area, the main caster is the Twilight Beguiler. His important cast is Seer Mind. This goes into a random player and has a channeled damage and stun for five seconds, so use interrupts. Or if you're a little late, you can use a CC to stop the channel. They also have a random target bolt ability, so spare kicks can go into that. The main lieutenant mob in this area are the Molten Giants. These guys have a nasty AoE hit in Molten Wake. This also puts a fire damage amp on everyone in the party, which is very, very important for tanks, as this mob also has a fire tank buster as well. So be aware of that. If it ever overlaps tanks, make sure you have a defensive running. It's also important for the next mob here, if you ever pull them together, because they have a Shadow Flame tank buster. That's the Twilight Flame renders, and their tank buster is Shadow Flame Slash. This is a big Shadow Flame hit, and also, for some reason, a shadow flame bleed uh, it deals shadow flame damage but it is removable by bleeds i don't know if this is a mistake but if you have a bleed cleanse you can remove those otherwise tanks be prepared heavy damage with these flame renders probably one of the scariest tank buster mobs at least in beta testing for the season they also have a random target frontal so everyone make sure you avoid that shifting gears to the boss here he's got three different abilities depending on what weapon he's wielding and he changes the weapon that he's using after casting each ability once whenever he does change weapons he does some channeled group damage so make sure you are ready for that to start though, he always goes with his axe, which gives him the Fiery Cleave Random Target Frontal. This also leaves behind Molten Pools for 5 minutes, and because it has pretty large area denial on top of it, I recommend tanking the boss near an edge or a wall here, and having your party bait that frontal in order to maximize your space. After his axe, he always goes towards his sword, which grants him Molten Flurry. 
This deals heavy tank damage over a six second channel. So make sure you're using a defensive here. And it also applies the Molten Spark Dot to three random players over that duration. So the debuff players also could use a defensive if they have one or just get some extra healer attention. Beware because when this dot expires, it actually drops more of those Molten Pools around you. So again, try and drop this either towards an edge or near some existing puddles. His final weapon is the Mace, which allows him to cast Molten Mace, increasing his melee damage by 1000%, but also slowing him by 50%. This also causes him to spawn Molten Pools underneath him, and overall this buff lasts for 10 seconds. So when this happens, tanks, you need to make sure you are kiting to avoid getting one shot by just a regular melee swing. And ideally, again, kite along the walls, try and kite the boss through existing puddles, whatever you can do to not eat up too much space. Because this fight has so much area denial, I do recommend you start it near the door you actually came in at and clear up to at least the second Molten Giant trash mob just to make sure you have enough space to actually fight him. Moving on though, we of course have some more trash mobs. Tanks, you need to be aware of the Twilight Enforcer mobs. These guys have the Ramping Rage ability, giving them a stacking and rage attack speed increase with each auto attack. So you can use stuns that are longer than three seconds in order to drop stacks here, or you can use a Soothe, or if needed, you can also Kite. The Lieutenant mob in this area are the Twilight Lava Benders. These guys are very, very scary as at low health, they will use Ascension, which hits anyone within eight yards of the mob itself initially. And then from there on out, every two seconds, it deals pulsing damage to your entire group so when there's multiple of these guys in a pool you only ever want to push one of them to this ascension phase and kill that one before you do the next one outside of that these guys also have a random target frontal line attack for you to avoid and also will put aoe's around each player which you need to be a little bit spread out the main caster in this area are the Twilight Warlocks. Their important ability is the Enveloping Shadow Flame Curse ability. It goes out on two random players, and it's a Healing Absorb and Nasty Dot. So if you have a Curse to spell, get rid of this. Otherwise, healers pump healing into these players to get rid of that Healing Absorb, which also removes the Dot. Otherwise, use spare kicks on their random target bolt. Then we've got the third boss, Draga Shadowburner, which is quite similar to the Cataclysm version of the fight. To start, you have the boss himself, and the most important mechanic is Invocation of Shadow Flame. This spawns a mob somewhere along the edges of the room, and it fixates a random player. This also will apply a lethal dot to your entire group if that mob ever touches that player, so you need to make sure you stay away. Use things like CCs, you know, knockback stuns, slows, anything that allows you to just cleave this mob down, ideally under the boss if possible but kind of depends who's getting fixated. Draga will also occasionally debuff three players with Curse of Entropy, which can be dispelled, removed with a freedom effect, or removed via healing it, just like the Absorb from the Warlocks we mentioned earlier. Outside of that, the boss just has a tank interrupt in this phase that you can keep a kick rotation on. When you push the boss to zero HP, he jumps off the platform and mounts Valiona, starting phase two. In this phase, the tank bolt no longer happens, but his invocation cast actually is empowered, now spawning two adds back to back. So you need to make sure you are swapping to these and getting them down quickly while also making sure the fixated players are not getting touched. Valiona has a couple new abilities of her own as well, starting with Twilight Buffet. This is a big group hit and knockback, so make sure you are positioned so that you, one, don't get knocked off the platform, and you, two, don't get knocked into your invocation ad if you are being fixated. Shortly after each Buffet cast, Valiona will use Devouring Flames, which is a frontal targeted at the tank, so just make sure she's pointed away from your group and then step out of the effect yourself. At 50% HP, Valiona flees, ending the encounter. From there, we only have a couple more trash mobs on the way to the last boss. The little guys in this area are the mutated hatchling, but their ability is quite important because on death, they will debuff all players with shadow wound. This is a stacking 5% shadow damage taken increase for 15 seconds, which can be very, very scary in combination with some of the AoE shadow damage in this area. The other new mob in this area is the faceless corruptor, and they also have some shadow damage in corrupt. This targets a single player and deals heavy individual damage to them over six seconds so again very scary if they're stacked up with shadow moons make sure you pop a defensive if this is targeting you they also will spawn some swirlies on the ground which you should avoid otherwise you will become mind controlled that brings us to the final boss eridax which is another heavy area denial fight Throughout this encounter, the boss channels Void Surge. This deals moderate group damage, and it also spawns Void Tendrils all across the room, which lasts for two minutes at a time. These tentacles are stationary, but if any player steps on them, they'll be attacked by Depth's Grasp, stunning and dealing heavy damage to them over four seconds before despawning. If you really need the space, you can use things like Immunities to help clear out tentacles. Otherwise, you just need to avoid them. To reduce the amount of space you have to play with even more, the boss will occasionally use Shadow Gale, which fills the majority of the room up with this storm over 15 seconds, leaving just a small circle for your group to play in. 
Shortly after it reaches max size, the boss then debuffs three players with the Abyssal Corruption Dot. This also deals pulsing damage in a six yard AoE around the players, so you need to quickly spread out in the small space you have to avoid cleaving each other. This is a good spot to use a defensive if you're one of the debuffed players. Once the storm actually dissipates, the boss will then corrupt some of the nearby eggs with Void Infusion, spawning more of those mutated hatchling mobs that we just discussed earlier that apply that shadow damage taken increase to your group. So you need to be careful here because shortly after these guys do spawn, the boss will start channeling Void Surge again, and if you're fully stacked up, you may need to use defensives on that cast. Before the Void Surge cast, though, the boss will always cast Crush on the tank which is a large hit and knockback make sure you always have a defensive up and watch where you are as you really do not want to get knocked into one of those tentacles and then be stunned from there the fight just repeats until defeated but there we have it guys the revamped grim batol hopefully you learned something here and if you did be sure to leave a like subscribe and check out my other dungeon and raid guides over on my channel otherwise thank you to my supporters over on patreon for making these videos possible and i'll see everyone in the next video